Hi and welcome to this tutorial on how to use the stair calculator in Revit. I haven't come across any material online that describes this feature so I thought I'd put together a short movie to hopefully unravel what appears to be an elusive tool. The staircase calculator is found by navigating over to the type properties of the stair tool. Next to the calculation rules you should see an option to edit the calculation rules. If you press the edit button you should be presented with the stair calculator. On initial inspection, all the parameters appear to be greyed out. This can be changed by selecting the Use Stair Calculator for Slope Calculation option. Once activated, the parameters should be available for edit. If we examine the interface a tad closer, we should be able to see the following. An area to describe a calculation rule for the target slope. An area that describes a range that the result output by the calculation rule above must reside within. And finally, the values in the type properties of the stair that describe the min and max values for the rise and depth. The numbers outside those specified for the max riser and min tread depth all seem a tad arbitrary. Hopefully by the end of the video you will understand their relationship to the stair slope. So before we go any further within Revit I think it would be useful to examine two documents. Uh, the first document is part K of the building regulations and the second document is a spreadsheet that I've put together that calculates the values based upon rules set out in part K. So let's take a look at part K first. Part K of the building regulations is an approved document that describes how to protect from falling, collision and impact. Section K1 describes this in relation to stairs, ladders and ramps. Within this document, you will find many useful snippets of information, however we are solely interested in this document's relationship to the stair calculator. So I'm going to navigate to the page which is most appropriate for this video. In the diagram in front of us, we can see two sections through a staircase. This diagram describes how to measure the rise and the going. This is useful information and should be applied to stairs in Revit, however it doesn't describe any rules that should be adhered to when designing stairs. So if we turn to the next page, the information is readily available to us, so let's do just that. In section 1.3, it stipulates the following. In a flight of steps, for all steps, use the measurements for rise and going given the three stair categories in the table below. Use any rise between the minimum and maximum and any going between the minimum and the maximum that complies with the relevant note in the table. There are three notes in the table. The first note suggests the maximum pitch for a private stair is 42 degrees. The second note suggests that for dwellings, for external tapered steps and stairs that are part of the building, the going of each step should be a minimum of 280 millimetres. And note three suggests for school buildings, the preferred going is 280 millimetres and the rise is 150 millimetres. Below these numbered points are starred points, and it's the first starred point that we're interested in. And it suggests this. The normal relationship between the dimensions of the rise and the going is twice the rise plus the going, 2R plus G. This should equal between 550 millimetres and 700 millimetres. So with this information to hand, I'm going to navigate to a spreadsheet that I've created. In column one, from top to bottom, we have the maximum riser height for a residential stair all the way to the minimum riser height. In the first row, we have Minimum tread depth allowed for residential stair all the way through to the maximum tread depth. Each cell is calculating two times the rise plus the going and next to the calculation is the resulting angle. This calculation is just a simple trigonometry equation. So as for the colours, um, the colours on the graph represent the following. Uh, green is within the threshold of 550 and 700, which is stipulated in the build regulations. Yellow is an angle equal to or below 42 degrees. Orange falls between the threshold of 550 and 700. However, the resulting angle is greater than 42 degrees, so it's not applicable for a residential staircase. Uh, red indicates that the calculation is outside the threshold of 550 and 700. So now let's look at a couple of examples. If we have a riser of 220 and a tread of 220, the calculation 2 times the rise plus the going would return 660, which is within the tolerances specified. However, the resulting angle is 45 degrees, which is greater than 42 degrees and therefore not a viable option. 
On the other hand, if we have a riser of 198 and a tread of 220 and apply the same equation, we have a calculated value of 616, which is well within the tolerance you specified and also slightly less than 42 degrees, which complies fully with part K1. So with that in mind, what we need to do is now apply this logic within Revit. So we're back in the Revit environment and it's now time to look at how this should work. Before we get going, let's make a few changes to the type properties. Let's make sure we input 220 and 220 in both of these parameters. This input matches part K for private stroke residential stairs. Now let's examine the stair calculator. Firstly, let's make sure that our stair calculator is on and we're able to input the correct equation, which is 2 times the rise plus 1 times the going. If we insist that our answer to this equation should be 660, which is the actual result of the stair calculator based upon the type properties below, then you will always draw a stair without any manipulation of the tread depth that will be equal to that calculation and within building control tolerances. So what is Revit doing for us in the background? Revit will go through the process dividing the finished floor level to finished floor level by the maximum riser height. This will return the number of steps required, which in turn will influence the tread depth. As Revit has worked out the riser height, it then looks for the appropriate tread depth that will return 660 if the calculation was run, in this case 2 times the rise plus 1 times the going. Now this will not guarantee a 42 degree staircase. It can't based upon the tolerances. All it will do is make sure that it falls within the tolerances, so it's up to the end user, i.e. you and I, to make sure that the staircase is fit for purpose and within the rules set out in part K. This is done by using a simple bit of trigonometry. I've created a detailed component that will work out the tread length required if a known riser height and desired angle are input. If the output of this component is placed in the instance parameter of the stair tread, the end user can guarantee a 42 degree pitch stair that is within building control tolerances. So there may be some questions that need answering. <clears throat> One of the questions would possibly be, could this result have been achieved without using the stair calculator? And I guess the answer is yes. Uh, so if this is the case, I guess the next question would be, why use the stair calculator to start with? And here is the answer. The stair calculator will issue a warning when you are outside the specified tolerances uh, that are documented in part K. If I put a figure in the tread depth before I commit to my sketch, let's say something like 280, the calculator should respond with a prompt to suggest that the input is out of the range and therefore the staircase does not meet part K standards. And this is what we're looking for. This functionality would not have been achievable without the stair calculator.